Hey everybody, we've got Eye of the Samurai again. This time around we're going to be playing against Jimbonator, an Ezio player, the Ezio player, uh, more known now for his reciting of stories in fan fiction theater with silly voices that I find annoying. Um, but he is an incredible Ezio player. Um, and personally, I've, I have a lot of respect for his play, if only because when I first started playing the game, Ezio was my main character for the first three, four months, and eventually I just had to give up on the guy because I couldn't really find a way to make him work, and to this day, I don't really think he's a particularly powerful character. Um, Mitsurugi versus Ezio. Uh, I think this is a matchup in Mitsurugi's favor, uh, which you can probably tell, I think, about virtually every character in the cast. Uh, the moves to look out for here, 2K and wall rising A slash 66A, and those are basically the tools that he has. Other than that, uh, Mitsurugi, just another matchup where he pokes in the mid-range and Ezio has a very difficult time to deal with it. The thing to look out for again is the 2K and the 2K into backstep mix-up for uh, wall rising A. 2K, tech crouches under a variety of things. 4B traps don't normally work against Ezio. They do to a certain extent, but you have to set them up. And it'll, it'll tech crouch 1B sometimes, BB, 6B. So it's something to lo look out for. And more importantly, it's about patience. It's about, because again, it's just 2K. So you can't let it bother you too heavily. We've got three matches. Let's start with the first one right away. <clears throat> so we're starting off. I already have the BB. So that's something that I do on the wall quite a lot, is that I'll do 4B because I find getting situations with Mitsurugi at the wall in terms of wall combos is actually quite difficult. He doesn't really have a way to like set that kind of thing up. And also, wall combos aren't really his forte unless they're high wall combos, and I have a difficult time confirming when that actually happens. There's a particular Mitsurugi player that comes to mind. I can't remember his name, but I find he does a lot of 3-3-B when he's really in close. And I understand that because you definitely get the high wall combo and he seems to really enjoy that type of thing. But I don't like it from a spacing and mind games point of view because I, you, like, literally he'll do 3-B right up in front of somebody's face to the point where it's incredibly easy to punish and you're just not getting a lot of pressure there. There's no mix up there. And uh, I like something where my opponent has to guess. Now, Getting the 4B does give me a wall combo, which is not nothing. That's that's almost, you know, half health. Uh, at that particular point, I believe I could have gotten something bigger just because based on the spacing. Yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty close to where I think I could have gotten 3B, which would have done another re-wall splat into a bigger combo. Uh, but that is very inconsistent and is also dependent on the range of 4B. So I tend to just, you know confirm it with just 6-6-B-B, which is virtually guaranteed at every range at every time. That's what I do there. That's another thing I should point out, is an immediate adaptation. So I, I put myself at a small frame disadvantage, just like I did with the 2-2-A that set up the 4-B before, and this time he's going for a 6-6-B, which would have beaten out the exact same thing. So he's making adaptations immediately. My 4B is so much better than his 4-4-B. So now he's forced to do things like 2-A, and he's just losing out on the damage. No, oh, that was a really bad uh, clash for me. He goes for the, uh, the reset. And there I was hoping for it to, you know, jump over a... Uh, uh, 2K or 2A. Chances are the 2K, if he had done it, uh, the jump B wouldn't have worked. It would have tech crouched uh, under it. But also, in this set, I'm not sure if you see it in this specific set of matches, but he does a lot of jump B to get over lows. Uh, Ezio, I guess, or at least Jimbo, wants to do a lot of hard reads to kind of avoid mix-ups. Not just mix-ups in terms of 2KB, but also 1K, 6B2, stuff like that. Uh, and it's important to note that in this set, I realized just how wide of a hitbox Ezio Jump B has. 
and it's also punishable. So that's something that hopefully comes up later on in the set. Nice punish on the 3B. Catches uh, me running. I'm doing 4B in the mist. I'm not 100% sure if I meant to do that both times. Yeah, you saw the jump B there. It didn't work out that time. And again with the 4B. Like, there, like in that situation, I'm convinced that like 3B would not have worked on the wall splat. Not in the least. Yeah, like right there. That Even though it looks like 3B would have, I'm pretty sure that just due to one reason or another, it would not have worked out. Uh, but 6SBB is enough. And in both of these rounds, really what I'm doing is just doing the pokes. This is just doing the poking game, uh, standing at a particular range of like 1B, which can outrange Ezio BB, uh, 1K, 6B2. Uh, I'm doing stuff like that. And, in, and instead of counter poking, which Ezio really can't do, he's trying to go with movement, which then forces him to guess on another one of my pokes, and that's exactly what I want him to do. <laughs> I think it was a 2KB that he beat me out there. Oh. That's gonna angle in the perfect way where uh, I don't get the, uh, the ring out. And that situation right there is basically the whole game. Also, I think I could have gotten a 3B here uh, as opposed to a 1B. So I get hit by a 2A, but like you could transfer it just in terms of uh, it could have been a 2K as well. And the idea is, if I'm going to press a button, then he's just going to do 2A or 2K again. If he thinks I'm going to move out of the way, then he does this. And that's the whole game plan with Ezio, and that's the thing that I need to worry about. That's really the main way that he beats me in terms of him playing his game. Everything else that he does, he beats me by reading the option that I'm going to do in my game. And there's a big difference between that. It's me playing my game, him playing his game. I want to always play my game uh, and get the options that I want to have happen. Because um, even if I guess wrong, that's fine. Just as long as the momentum stays in my favor. This is, is exactly what I don't want to have happen. Going back to the poking game. And now it's just a matter of patience. And not getting hit by run-up grabs. See what I mean? The, the hitbox is so much bigger than I than I would think it is. Also, Ezio has a fantastic, uh, even better uh, low finisher than I do in 2KB, where he has uh, what is it? 6K2. 6K2 is massively punishable on hit, but it's this wide hitbox, and it doesn't have. It looks a lot like the move that he used right there, which I think is 2A plus B, um, which is a mid. So now I'm always worried. In terms of low finishers, I always have to be worried about 6K2. <clears throat> you might have noticed that he sidestepped towards the wall every round. Uh, so I believe I started the round with a run up uh, 99K each time. This time I do a 4A so that I don't get hit out. Back to the poking game. I'm doing the exact same stuff. You've heard me talk about 4K on the wall as well. I'm not really doing all that well with my whiff punishers, but uh, it's okay. And I'm just winning out on the damage. I, you know, now, I, now I force him to come to me. Well, that one wasn't all that great, but... So now I'm stuck in this situation. That's one thing that uh, you should note. Uh, I would say... Potentially other Ezio players should be doing this as well, but again, Geminator's really the only one. I win that kind of on jank, um, but I wanted to talk about this here. Is uh, Geminator has a, a fairly solid idea of what to do with wall pressure, so he'll do frame traps like this, where he'll do a 2A plus B, or he'll do, a, what is it, a 1K, and he'll do a sidestep into grab, into wait for the whiff, uh, for the punish and stuff like that. So I end up just, uh, I, I tend to just rely on my high defense. It was a good side step there. And uh, when I said jank, right there, he had frame advantage. So uh, it's really kind of surprising to me that 2K didn't uh, get under the 4B. And then I just decided to rush up for a 2KB. Um, 
You could argue, you know, he should have been worried about the ring out, but at the same time, not so much, because 3B would have killed as well. It's just a basic mix-up. Maybe he should have stayed on the ground, uh, who's to say. That's just a really tough situation. So we're going to move on to the second game. Ring outs everywhere. Ezio, as far as I know, not really known for ring outs. Some people say that uh, Mitsurugi has a really good ring out game. I don't really know, understand why, uh, but that's an, a conversation for a different time. So right there gives me a lot of information. You've heard me talk about this before where I try to read my opponent in terms of techable knockdowns. Lots of people like to get hit by Mitsurugi's B grab, which is easily his worst grab, and then tech in a particular way, and depending on which direction they choose and what buttons they press, it kind of gives me an idea of what my opponent's personality is. He immediately did a two-way. Uh, arguably, it could have been what he meant to do was a while rising A, which arguably would have hit me, but it also got, would have gotten hit by 6-6-B, so perhaps he was trying to catch me like running in. Um, so it's, it's an important thing to remember about. I got hit by that. No, that's... What was that again? Yeah, I just got hit by the second hit of 6-6-B. That's no good. I'm not really dealing with that move very well. But yeah, this 6-B-8 range... I mean, Ezio just kind of has to, like, throw that stuff out there. Like, look, you know... This range here, he just... He simply cannot bridge this gap without making a hard read, and it's very difficult. I just keep him at the 6B8 range the whole time. He has to take bets like that, and I mean, congrats, it worked the first time, but this is why I think the matchup is pretty bad. I should have a better reaction on gunshots, potentially. Uh, I try to, like, read the roll and do, like, a 2KB instead, but there's probably, like, a hard answer that I'm just not thinking about. So this I'm just remaining patient the entire time. Uh, note how long it takes before I press a button. Whips again, and I decide to continue to wait. Because if we start getting scrappy, I feel like there's a chance that, you know, I want to lean on the one advantage that I know I have. And why, why, make, any, why make any ruffles about it? I mean, how long did I go without pressing a button there? So let's say 58. I get hit by 2k, that doesn't matter. I'm not really worried about that. I get hit by the 1, again, that's negligible damage. Whiffs again, and then he'll whiff again. So from 58 to 38, basically. <laughs> And, I, and I'm just very intent on keeping this particular space. Also, you could argue the, the one of the reasons why I'm quote-unquote so patient is because my whiff punishing reaction time isn't all that strong. But I, I'm just very adamant about keeping it at a range and keeping uh, my advantage the way I want it. Um, I don't have any reason to take any bets, so I'm not going to. And, uh, and also, it, there, there's a point of just frustrating my opponent into making his own mistakes. He whiffed quite a handful of times, and he didn't hit confirm uh, the 2-2 AA. I'm not really sure if you can do that, but, uh, you know, it, it seems like it's frustrating my opponent enough to where he's making his own mistakes. So, for instance, I whiff here, and we hit the 2K, I whiff there, whiff again, and, and, and catch him with that. 6A, not really all that bad on whiff, not bad on just guard even, and uh, it's something that I used to fish, so I was very patient and now I'm switching it up almost immediately to, uh, to take advantage of my opponent wanting to press buttons, or at least get in my face. This is another, uh, this is another knockdown where uh, I'm kind of worried about the wall rising A. And uh, so normally in this situation, I'll either go for a 6-6-B, a run-up 6-6-B, or a run-up sidestep. But I'm wor I don't want to do run-up sidestep like I would against other characters because he one of his main panic buttons is a very high-damaging thing that could potentially put him back in the game, again, while rising A. Uh, and also, I've just been having weirdly difficult times 
uh, getting my media attacks to work. So I decided to do a run up and block because I'm fairly certain that he's going to do a wake up something. Uh, it tended to be safe, but that doesn't matter. I'll take a big bet because I have such a huge life lead, and uh, and that closes out that round. So he's peppering me a lot with uh, two A's now. Uh, my spacing isn't exactly where I want it to be in the 6B8 range. Yeah, catch me with that again. It was uh, that was the exact same series as before. 1-1-K one, one uh, into a B grab, which is the same thing that he did in the first game when he caught me with 1-1-K. One, one Important to note. No, my spacing's off again. Getting hit by AA. My 4B is so much better. This is a setup that I like to do. Um, catching people with 2k on the ground tends to make people want to get up and press buttons again because I'm not at a great uh, I'm not in a great situation frame wise and again there's all this space and I think I talked about this in the set with annuity where I find that there's a lot of situations where people just want to get up pressing buttons against Mitsurugi as if he doesn't have media attacks when really he does he does in so many situations that I find not a lot of other people either know about or apply it to their own game I'm not really sure why um, but yeah, the 6 is B, either catching movement or or pressing a button. Oh, I'm not sure about that grab. Yep, I'll just keep it at this pace. It's important to not try and finish the round as fast as possible. Yep. So he went for a sidestep into grab, but he was late on it, and the tech crouching of the second 3B uh, can tend to help me out there. I'm not sure if it specifically helped me out there. Uh, so in this third game, you're going to see the adaptation that Jimbo can put into me constantly doing the 6B8 range. He probably gathered a lot of data that I wasn't all that comfortable with certain strings and with certain frame traps that Ezio can put on Mitsurugi and any other character. And uh, so he really tends to hit me hard with uh, with this match. So he immediately catches me running. So right there, you see me you see me say it once and once again. It, so in this situation, what I've done in the past is do something like four B, and I believe in this time I do two three six A. Um, 2 through 6A, not all that great here because Ezio doesn't really have these mashy moves or these panic buttons that are highs that I'll tend to duck under from other characters. Uh, and also, I'm willing to bet that he tried to read a 4B there and he, re and he hits me as hard as he can, which is with that, 6 is B. Not really sure about the, the A plus B there. Yeah, I'm not dealing with that. Am I screwing up the just guard? There's the frame trap that I talked about before, 2A plus B into a sidestep and just waiting for me to do a whiff. Yeah. Yeah, not much I can do there, because very much like in the end of the second game, he just has all of these safe moves, 2A and 2K, that'll finish out the round. Um, and it doesn't really matter whether I block them or not, I really had to like get something going before I can even attempt to make a play for that round. <clears throat> I find that he's moving a lot, so I'm trying to like throw in a lot of that kind of stuff. There's another frame trap, 3A into 2A, but it doesn't it doesn't actually work. And he's and, and he's really using 2K a lot more than he was before. And he catches me with a run and grab. So he's being a little bit more aggressive this time, and uh, we're in a smaller stage. Uh, well, I guess it's not that much of a smaller stage, but it has it has walls as opposed to the last round uh, or the last stage, and uh, and yeah, it's it's it, it's difficult when my opponent has this much momentum going against me. More 2K, more 2K. Here is uh, the hop mix-up that I took from Hyunmu, the Mitsurugi player from Korea. Um, one of the things that you can do here is, obviously he's on the ground, so 2KB is a little bit worrisome, so I tend to do 3B as like my first attempt to see what they're trying to do. Um, 
so you can just get up and block it, and then I have to remember that you're going to do that kind of thing, and I'll go for 2kb next time, and hopefully I'll be right. <laughs> Miss with the 4a, he does his just guard. Here he attempts to, like, ca uh, catch my just guard attempt, so he forces me to block that. The first hit of B was uh, ducked under 2k. So yeah, it's a, it's a lot of 6-6-B six, six stuff. Um, now he's ducking a lot of the highs and lows that I have. And I really just can't get anything going. I'm stuck in this box. Uh, and he beats me up there. So uh, so those are the three games that I have. I like the adaptation that Jimbo uh, did. I say this every time. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on what the score was overall or which of these matches happened in what order, but I just feel like this kind of gives you an idea of how to deal with Mitsurugi at 6v8 range, which is not to, and just go in into a little bit of a closer range, or deal with things like strings and frame traps, and force me, and like catch me out of my movement, at least with Ezio. So that's going to finish up this video. Uh, I'm going to be changing up the format of this show uh, a little bit now. I'm going to go into tournament matches, or at least once or twice, uh, I'll go into my tournament matches, but also, uh, if you guys have any suggestions as to what I should do with the rest of the uh, series, please let me know. Should I uh, start commentating or analyzing other people's matches? Is there a way for people to send me games that they want me to uh, that they want me to look into? Uh, please let me know, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. All right, thanks very much.